All right, uh, who are everybody? Uh, who are everybody? This is Matamela Odom, all the way from Impedum, San Diego. Um, uh, uh, Impedum, San Diego, for another uh, Impedum uh, Burning Spear Study Group. Uh, uh, I want to um, uh, welcome everyone who's watching live on Facebook, as well as everyone who is. Uh, a part of the Zoom stream. Remember on Facebook, uh, you can uh, type your comments and your questions, and then the question and answer segment, uh, 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 those questions will be uh, uh, asked. Um, also, uh, um, uh, uh, you can um, uh, make sure that if you're part of the Zoom stream, that you go ahead and, uh, and, and put your questions in the chat or the um, uh, in the chat or or in the question and answer segment here on the Zoom live stream as well. So uh, Darius, can you pull up uh, to Charwa's uh, video as well? And for now, uh, um, uh, stop uh, Demetrius's video. Demetrius, uh, you got to get a little bit better lighting behind you. Char, did you want to say something? Uh, just, just wanted to say a hoo uh, I'm happy to be a part of this study group. I think this is so, so, so important and uh, a significant platform for us to really advance the uh, theory of African internationalism, train our forces, put it out into the world, and really uh, take and impede them all across the planet, even more so than we already are. So. Oh, Huru, Huru, thank you. Thank, thank you for that. And, and uh, can you uh, please uh, introduce yourself, who you are? Yeah, my name is Tachara Masimba. I'm the Economic Development Director of the Black Power Blueprint, a uh, project of the African People's Education and Defense Fund. I'm also a member of uh, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. So I'll be here today, you know, kind of representing the Black Power Blueprint, this um, real incredible project um struggling for african self-determination and building an international african economy anti-colonial african economy as a uh, part of the uhuru movement uhuru, uhuru. all right so so we have a very uh, uh action-packed uh next uh, two hours for everybody uh with, with with three dynamic readings and discussion questions uh focused on uh looking at the the the, the 29 year history of the International People's uh, Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, uh, from the moment of its founding all the way up to the present. Uh, um, uh, if you are following on Facebook, if you go to the description of the event on Facebook, you can have a link to the readings and to the, the link to the readings and the discussion questions are listed there uh, on, on the Facebook event page as well. Uh, and, and you are able to uh, uh, follow along with us as well. Um, so I would like to begin by saluting my leadership. First and foremost, uh, 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 the chairman, uh, Omali Eshetela, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and African Socialist International. I'd like to salute President Colin Bailly and Danette of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, I would also like to give uh, 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 an important important salute to um, the very uh, crucial leadership at this time, crucial leadership of the African Socialist International, Secretary General uh, uh, Louisa Kinshasa, as well as Dr. Aisha Fields of the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project. Uh, please go to developmentforafrica.org and find out about the um, uh, a black project, Black Ankh and the People's War against the colonial virus, uh, uh, underscoring that COVID-19 is a colonial virus. Um, uh, uh, also, I'd like to call everybody to uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, and on Sunday, we have an action-packed weekend of webinars. We have uh, tomorrow, the uh, African People's Socialist Party Western Region is holding a webinar at 1 p.m. Pacific time that can be found at the African People's Socialist Party USA Facebook page. There's also 
a, a still room in the Zoom webinar for those who want to be a part of the Zoom webinar. Uh, 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 after that, uh, tune in every Sunday for Omali Taught Me, uh, the political education directly from uh, a Chairman Omali Yeshitela, uh, uh beginning at 8 Eastern uh, time. Uh, um, uh, you can find that on Chairman O'Malley Eschatella's Facebook pa page, as well as on Burning Spear TV on YouTube. Uh, the overall purpose of, of this is to introduce uh, everyone to African internationalism. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, if you go to APSPUhuru.org, you can find a much deep, uh, you can find a definition of inter African internationalism is the theory of the African working class. Um, it's to introduce you all to impedum. What is impedum? Uh, to the African People's Socialist Party and to the Burning Spear with a, with, with a 52 year history, uh, 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 uninterrupted history at that. It's the, the, the longest running uh, black power uh, newspaper, the only paper to survive the, um, uh, the counterinsurgency, which we'll be talking about today. Now, there's a specific outline of the readings that we do every week. Uh, first off, we do a reading uh, coming out of uh, the African internationalist readings and the readings directly coming out of the writings of Chairman Omali Yeshitela, a mixture of political reports and other sort of uh, uh, readings which deepen our understanding of African internationalism. Then we apply those reading, that reading uh, to uh, uh, first a historic article uh, out of the Burn and Spear archives that is housed at the University of Florida Digital Collections. You can go there and find the Burning Spear archives. Uh, and then we read a recent article that can be found at the burningspear.com. Uh, this week we have uh, a reading coming from the uh, report to the APSP 2020 plenary uh, uh, to the seventh Congress. And then we have a reading from 1991 by Akua, Akua and Jerry called The Counterinsurgency is Genocide in Its Rawest Form. And, 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 the, and the last reading will be uh, President Colin Bailly delivers a powerful speech at Darren Seals' funeral, September 21st, 2016. Uh, following that, we will uh, uh, do you know, regular uh, business items. Uh, we'll call for you to sign the ACG petition. Uh, we will um, uh, 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 appeal for resources and appeal for membership. Uh, uh, so let's move on into uh, this, this reading. The very first reading will begin. I'll ask everybody to open up the reading, the, uh, 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 the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement from the Political Report to the APSP Plenary 2020 by Chairman Omali Yeshitela. We'll, we'll, we'll do the readings. Sometimes we do them round robin style. Uh, right now, I'll ask for um, uh, Comrade Tachara to, 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 to open up the reading. And, um, and, and following that, uh, we'll have a discussion and answer section. This should take us a little bit uh, around 20 minutes uh, for, for questions and discussion and answer. All right, Huru. So uh, the international, I'm starting at the bottom of page 53 on the reading entitled The International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, Impedum. The existing iteration of Impedum was organized by our party in Chicago, Illinois in 1991. We are not the same Impedum as then. It is the Impedum that has developed beyond our initial errors and beyond the limitations of subsequent leaders chosen by me, the party chair. And all the laws of, the laws of dialectics mean that contradictions continue to exist and always will. We have built an organization that not only withstands contradictions, but also that absorbs and learns from contradictions and moves our struggle ahead in the process. Our development of organization moves us beyond the era of charismatic leadership where the success of our struggle revolves around a single individual. Impedum, or impedum continues to lead and is in the process of doing so despite the frequent, sometimes disruptive intrusion of colonial contradictions in the lives of some of our leaders and members. 
in Pedum as an instrument of the advanced detachment continues to create and develop other competent and devoted leaders. This is due to the tenacity of our party determined to never retreat from the struggle to defeat colonial capitalist domination of our people and class. Our stance is to never surrender in the face of what has often seemed to be insurmountable odds. We are determined that with real African internationalists defined liberation after at least uh, 600 years of European colonial subjugation, no one will ever dominate Africa and our people again. And PETO now functions through the leadership of its international executive committee. It is an executive committee that is being molded and shaped in the process of carrying out its mission as defined by our party. Once a disparate group of individuals, of idealists, liberals, and anarchists coming from a hodgepodge of ideological views, and PETUM's executive committee is now comprised mostly of African internationalists who have learned organization and are becoming more competent every day. And PETUM has established a very promising presence in New York after years of a nominal existence following the disorder and discord left in the wake of previous, uh, a previous impedum and party leader stationed in this city and the Northern region. Today, more and more Africans are coming into impedum. Regular political events are carried out by impedum that have brought into our embrace and deepened our relationship with honest African militants who respect our leadership in the struggle for African self-determination. And Pedum's work in New York has also contributed to the, to the conditions for strengthening the presence of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And Pedum is also a contributing to the growth of the party internationally. The African People's Socialist Party occupied Azania has worked with the Pedum Executive Committee to organize Pedum branches in several of the provinces of South Africa. The South African Pedum organization has a national president, Zekeli Zekeli appointed by the APSP occupied Azania president, Tafari Mugheri. The capacity of Impedum South Africa is benefiting from the experiences and lessons of Impedum US. US. Impedum benefits from the combined experience and lessons throughout the world, from Houston, Texas to Sierra Leone, West Africa, and London, England. The ASI is now investigating the ability to establish Impedum in Ghana, West Africa. This is the work of the advanced attachment of the African revolution that is building everywhere, every day to translate theory into practice. This is African internationalism, our theory of practice. Moreover, this is the theory of practice being exercised by leaders that have been and are being developed through the work of forging our revolutionary presence. These are leaders who emerge through the process of practice within our organizational structures. This is an example of how organizational tenacity, unrelenting struggle to build an actual organizational capacity to win our own freedom is essential. We may suffer setbacks and disappointments, but we never quit. And because we never quit, because we are we vanguard up, we continue to develop our capacity to win. And PEDUM must also begin to implement in PEDUM's regional structure as laid out in its constitution. If we are to grow and scale, we must make plans to operate our mass organizations on a regional basis. This was addressed in Vanguard, the political report to the seventh Congress. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement must do this as well. And PETO must also reiterate a party campaign to win the African masses to practical participation in the drive for reparations by creating a reparation certificate that all Africans can sign indicating their personal demand for reparations. These certificates must be placed on outreach tables of the party and in PETUM to be signed by Africans throughout the colony who might not otherwise have an opportunity to learn about or fight for reparations without our leadership. The certificate must also allow for people to recognize in PETUM as an organization that they are authorizing to collect reparations from the African nation. And PETUM must emphasize its work to promote our African Choice genocide campaign that was initiated years ago. Now that Impedum has assigned a specific coordinator for the campaign, it offers us another means by which to bring countless Africans into greater national consciousness and political awareness. Thousands of Africans have already signed the online petition uniting with the campaign from throughout the world. Now we must send out Impedum members and the entire Uhuru movement throughout our regions, cities, and communities to get signatures allowing each African to personally charge the US with genocide. Obviously, this will be a great assistance to our reparations work as well. 
Every signature on and, and Pedum's petition will represent growing mass political education and a nail in the coffin of our colonial capitalist domination. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru. Vanguard up. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, uh, T'Chara. Uh, now we can, um, uh, everybody, if you can, you can uh, 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 open up your videos. We're going to go over the, the discussion questions. If you can pull up your discussion questions, um, uh, or, or we can look from the screen here as it's been shared. So the first question that I have for you all is, uh, what do you think that the chairman means uh, uh, that Impedum leadership has moved from a disparate group of individuals of idealists, liberals and anarchists, but is now mostly led by African internationalists who have learned organization and are becoming more competent every day. So uh, uh, what do you all think, what do you all think that the chairman means by, uh, by that question there? Or, 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 or what does that mean to you? Uh, Press Columbia. Oh, Horo. I don't know if I can be heard. I'm trying to. Can yeah, you hear me good? Oh, Horo. Oh, Horo. I just really want to um, appreciate um, this study. I think it's so important. And I just really want to appreciate um, your leadership, Mike Odom, and what you bring to uh, EPDOM. And I think that just this platform and what we talk, and oh, let me slow down. I want to really salute and appreciate um, Chachara from the Black Power Blueprint. And um, really appreciate this um, political report that we're reading, which was um, from the plenary. And, uh, you know, our party, this was our first um, plenary um, coming out of the um, Congress. And uh, what I think that this part means, like what, what Chairman is saying, uh, that EPDM have moved uh, beyond that, because we know that in the party, um, in EPDM, it's really important that we sum up everything. You know, every period, um, every action, everything we do, we sum up. And dialects teach us that um, when we sum it up um, contradictions, then it's going to be overturned. And I think that uh, EPDM is in a different period with different leadership because we understand um, Chairman has fought fiercely for the um, the leadership, me as international president, to build. Um, an executive committee, you know, executive committee. It couldn't be just one, um, you know, charismatic speaker. Uh, it couldn't be just go out and just do a couple of actions. Um, we had to have a real executive committee. We had to have a, a group of uh, leaders, you know what I'm saying, to make up a body um, to build this organization. And that was really critical to the development of EPDOM. And I believe that in the development of EPDOM, building um, an executive committee is where we've seen these contradictions um, overturned that it's not dependent on one individual. You know, this organization is not dependent on one individual or not um, for us to continue to move um, forward. So that's um, how, what I would want to uh, contribute to the conversation. Uhuru. <laughs> All right, Uhuru. Um, uh, what about this other part? I mean, maybe even you want to kick in on it, T'Chara, because I, mean, I think it's a very heavy statement. I think it's sort of deep politically. Uh, something. It's a statement that 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 the um, a chair is. Uh, it's a statement that that we are are looking at. Uh, I, I mean, that this study group itself is is meant to to resolve. But the contradiction. Oh, uh, what about this other part? I mean, maybe. Uh, 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 it sucks. Can somebody else press pause? Uh, stop. Stop their sound. Marquis, can you please mute yourself? Um, uh, if you're watching it on Facebook, uh, mute the Facebook video as well, because uh, uh, it's it's a little bit delayed. But um, what, like I said, what about this other part here? where um, it, it talks about moving from idealist liberals and anarchists to African internationalists. Because to me, that's the heavy punch that I think uh, that the chairman start off with that, that I do, do think objectively uh, uh, underscores the direction Impedum has taken. And really over the last five years, the real seriousness, uh, uh, it's just a reflection of the leadership, the recruitment, the elevation of, of mass members to, uh, to 
to to to to leadership in the organization and stuff like that. But what do you all yeah, think? Yeah, I think I I really I really agree with you, um, comrade. And I remember five years ago um, when Chairman, uh, you know, uh, Chairman O'Malley should tell us sort of having uh, O'Malley taught me, you know, and that was the 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 you know. Uh, so many Africans was coming into political life for various different reasons. But, we, you know, Chairman knew that they had to unite, not for personalities, not for charismatic stuff, but they had to unite with African, the theory. You know, ultimately, that's what um, bring us all together. The theory has to be the unity um, of the organization. And I just, I just wanted to say that because I've seen so, I've seen the party literally pour out so much um, to the African working class with, you know, uh, uh, many intensives on the grounds in Ferguson, you know, the Black Grand Jury, and all these was development, you know, um, this is how we were development um, into, you know, African internationalists and uniting with the theory. So I just wanted to say that. Well, uh, uh, Char? Yeah, um, I want to really appreciate uh, the international president of International People's Democratic Rural Movement. Uh, who, um, you know, is my greatest pleasure to be here on behalf of and the work that you're doing, Masamela. And then, um, you know, just to say, I'm, I want to recognize Chairman as well, uh, Omari Yeshitela, who uh, formed the organization, and then uh, Deputy Chair, under whose leadership I work directly. And uh, I, yeah, I, I unite with what has been said because um, you now I think what I'm hearing is that it's the fidelity to um, the manuals that the party has created. Uh, to provide, you know, policies and procedures so that we don't operate out of anarchy. It is the fidelity to the political report that we're reading uh, that President Kalamayi, uh, I know, learned over time to use this thing as her uh, revolutionary Bible, to pick it up, uh, mark it up, and then to fight for the political report, then to fight for African internationalism in theory and in practice. Because, uh, you know, and then because Impedum is a mass organization, right? And, you know, I would always hear President Columbia, you say, you know, Impedum will meet you at the political door, which means that you're not going to come in as a revolutionary. But I think what she's been able to do through, you know, uh, modeling these best practices, so to speak, and being stilled as a cadre member and as a revolutionary through actual theory and practice over time is that she's been able to develop a leadership body that uh, is filled with African internationalists. You know, so that whatever comes down to the masses of people who are in the organization is being driven by a leadership body that has the, uh, you know, African internationalist uh, theory, you know, because, um, you know, uh, when we come into organization, we, we, most of us don't recognize, but we have to learn to get rid of all of the ideas of our oppressor. And we come into organization with those ideas. We come into organization with ideas about how organizations should function. We come into organization with ideas about every question related to the most minute thing. And we think that those, uh, that our perspective on it is something that we created in our own head. And we don't recognize when we first come into organization that every idea that we have is the opinion of a particular worldview. It is a reflection of a particular worldview. It is a reflection of a particular philosophy, no matter how innocent it seems. And then that all philosophy is class philosophy. And your class philosophy will incline you to do one thing or to believe one thing rather than another. So when we come into an organization as mass forces, uh, you know, even if we've been we've come as a consequence of being part of other organizations, we don't recognize that we have this philosophical worldview that is an idealist philosophical worldview or a liberal or anarchist philosophical worldview um, where we don't like to struggle, uh, we don't like organization, we don't like to hold the political line and we think it's just an innocent difference of agreement or kind of tactical difference but it represents a, a class uh, opinion or a class worldview. And so that creates uh, anarchy and discord and uh, it really compromises the political line if you don't have at least a leadership body that is uh, filled up and down with African internationalists that can provide the coherent direction, you know. All right. Uh, so uh, I would just add that. 
Uh, let's move to the next two questions. You bring those both up, Darius. So where is some of the promising work of Impedum within the U.S. borders? Why do you think that the places the chairman listed are so crucial to the advances of Impedum? Next, uh, how has the international work of Impedum been translated uh, 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 translated African internationalist theory into practice as the chairman said? And the last question for this section is what is the importance of Impedum's mass campaigns such as African charge genocide and the reparations certificate? So uh, Tiana, you wanna uh, 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 kick off uh, some of those questions and get, dig into those a little bit. And you can pull up that last one, uh, uh, Darius. Um, yeah, I definitely read this um, article and I took notes, you know, uh, because it's, it, it's a lot of good information um, in this, this article. So um, where are some of the promising work? Um, I read that, you know, we had work in Chicago, um, work in Oakland. Um, and, you know, for example, the, you know, we had, um, we grew from, from being in Chicago. So we were in Chicago in like 1991 and we grew and um, we had forces in New York. And even though there had been some, you know, contradictions um, overall, we were able to build the, um, Hulu Solidarity Movement, you know, and get, you know, uh, you know, that kicked off. And then we grew into, you know, Africa. We went to, uh, we're in occupied Zania and all of those different places. So um, this is, you know, an accomplishment that, you know, for me, I don't see any other movement, you know, accomplish what, what a Hulu movement has accomplished, especially having forces in um, South South Africa or occupied as Zania. Um, and just by, you know, for to the answer about reparations and Africans charged genocide, those campaigns, why they're important, they're important again because we're the only ones doing that. And, we, and it's the only way to freedom. The only way to freedom is to destroy white power and to control, you know, the, the narrative that, that has been force fed to us. White power has been force fed to us and um, made us to believe that we didn't have a story to tell or that we don't have a message. So the fact that we have a story to tell, we have a message, um, that's what African internationalism is about. Um, so uh, the, the, those campaigns, and even from personal experience, seeing those the campaigns that we hold and seeing us speak out and, and fight back, you know, this brings other people into the organization. Um, and so that's how we grow as um, you know, uh, members of the Uhuru movement, that's how we continue to lead, you know, Africans to to freedom is by you know charging genocide, putting making genocide a household name and making um, uh, uh, reparations a household word. Excuse me, reparations genocide a household wor word, and teaching forces like you know in in Africa um, African internationalism because once we learn. Um, you know, the African, how to express ourselves and articulate ourselves and win the war of idea. Once we learn how, you know, to be under one theory, we become one nation, we, we become one Africa. So that's what I got from the, you know, questionnaire and everything. All right. Yeah. Uhuru, Uhuru. And, and, and the one thing that the chairman always uh, teaches us is that uh, 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 you can have theory without revolution, but you can't have revolution without theory. Um, oh. uh, 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 and 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 uh, uh, African internationalism is built off of uh, the pro process of dialectical materialism. So 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 if if these other theories, if sort of Christian idealism, if any of these other things would lead Africans across the finish line towards freedom. Uh, then undoubtedly uh, uh, those would be the theories that dialectically we would have chosen, uh, but they're not, right? Uh, the, the, the only one that gives us a material understanding. Um, so African internationalism seeks to give us, us, first off, teaches us that everything in the world is knowable, right? So, so, so it's not some mystical stuff that sort of we can't see, right? Uh, 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 and that revolution uh, uh, 
it's knowable and it's changeable, right? So, so revolution is 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 achievable. Um, uh, 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 it, it it lets us understand the place of African people around the world, uh, 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 in that world, and in relationship to capital, but also relationship to say uh, uh, the European and white North American working class, which is uh, 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 as the pedestal. Uh, uh, for 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 European wealth industrialization, et cetera, right? So, so so that's why it's so crucial for us to start off these readings uh, uh, with African internationalism and understand that the basis <coughs> the basis of the political education, sorry, sorry. of <laughs> of impedum. Is is teaching African internationalism to the uh, uh, to the to, to the masses um, now without a doubt uh, uh, yeah so I would say that right I, 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 uh, 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 I would I would say that so um, uh, we are almost out of time for this section but I do want to open it up to maybe one more person who hasn't spoken well comrade I I just hey, I'm sorry. But I just you one of the questions I just really wanted to speak to one of the questions that you posed because I wanted to like deepen what Tiana did a great job um, starting, um, which Tiana is one of our um, newest members. So I, I really wanted to talk about you know some of the incredible work, um, comrade, or you can or somebody else if you. No, no, please, please go know. for it. Okay, so I just wanted to say, like, you know, some of the um, great places that um, EPDM is doing great work all over, and we are an international organization, like my comrade said. St. Louis, Missouri, where we have the Black Power Blueprint, and, you know, um, where, uh, where we seen Mike Brown killed in the street and the whole world shook up, you know, it was nobody else that um, put, you know, the hardcore revolutionary work on the grounds in St. Louis, Missouri, but the African People's Socialist Party in the form of EPDOM and then um, the Black Power Blueprint, um, Deputy Chair's office and everything was built, you know, um, but the party came here and put a mass organization and built cadre um, to build um, some amazing institutions um, that's led by Deputy Chair Ona Zanaya Sotella. Um, and then I also want to say San Diego, um, where Michael Odom and Tiana and um, Mozzarella, um, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Luwambi um, is from and um, so many other um, amazing comrades and we see this area constantly growing with African shore genocide and at the border. Um, so San Diego and I also want to um, shout out um, South Africa, where we have like, you know, we are up to six or seven different precincts in South Africa under the leadership of Chairman um, Safari and um, also, uh, I want to shout out New York because we, we we experienced some contradictions where this article was talking about, but we see a, a rebirth in um, New York. Um, so I want to shout out some comrades as well in, um, in New York. Uh, and so um, these are some areas where I can say that it has did some tremendous growth, but um, EPDOM internationally has grown. And then through this epidemic, we have seen um, Africans, um, the African working class run towards organization um, in this crisis because they see a government um, being exposed. So, you know, this is a great period for, to be um, a revolutionary. Uhuru. Uh, yeah, Uhuru, Uhuru, thanks for summing that up. Yeah, and, and, I, and I really like can't underscore uh, the, the immense pride and joy uh, in the leadership uh, and, in the, and in the idea that in practice, not just in theory, uh, uh, the African internationalism, the African Socialist International, uh, uh, our mass base, the uh, the impedum uh, uh, is worldwide. You know, uh, um, uh, 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 and 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 from that we really see a blueprint uh, for for, uh, for building Black power uh, internationally um, for us to to move forward. Like I said. The blueprint for us building Black power uh, uh, internationally is is absolutely crucial. So, uh, at this point, I'd like us to move to uh, our next reading. Um, if you have that, uh, pull it up. It's called "The Counterinsurgency Is Genocide in Its Rawest Form." I really like this one because you know, my myself, I'm a historian. Uh, I've been going through so many of the old. Uh, in uh, Burning Spears, I'm up to the early 90s now. 
uh, and even long before we got the ACG campaign, uh, it's it's been the, the the party that has placed this idea of uh, of genocide on t on the table. Uh, but that's because remember the party uh, 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 was created right to to not just revive but complete uh, the African Revolution. Um, I, 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 and 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 so so these are the lessons, the teachings of even those who have preceded uh, us. So we see that at the beginning, that sort of uh, the 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 party is sorry, impedum was created to counter uh, to, to 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 fight the counterinsurgency placed against uh, uh, the the community, but that that counterinsurgency uh, amounted to a level of genocide. This is crucial, and I know we're over time. But it's, a, it's, a, it's essential for us to underscore the point that's being made here, because uh, at the time in which Impedum was created, a lot of organizations, even organizations that considered themselves black power, socialists, uh, uh, et cetera, um, really had fallen into, um, uh, uh, for the lack of a better term, say, blame the victim, culture of poverty narratives in which, in which African uh, the African working class was its own worst enemy. A lot of very popular black Marxist thinkers at that time, some of them are still very popular, uh, uh, were, were, were siding with the police, were, were blaming yeah. the gangs for the, for, uh, for, for the stuff in our community. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and even partnering with police organizations, uh, social work organizations, um, uh, a, a community, uh, neighborhood watch organizations and, and, and really repeating uh, uh, the strategies of the counterinsurgency uh, uh, on the community. So, I mean, this, uh, I, was, I was very young at this time, but this was the time in which black nationalist ideology was basically no more than just self-help ideology uh, uh, to, 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 to make you as an individual become a better person, but it did not give meaning to an understanding to the material uh, things taking place uh, uh, with the exception of we need to strengthen the black family, you know, uh, welfare uh, was a crutch. Like these are the things, you know, I was a very young person in the 80s, but these are the things that I remember being uh, said in, uh, in, in, in the spirit of this flag behind me, red, black, and green, right? So it's mm -hmm. the party that, mm -hmm. that, that, that challenged that, right? And eventually, yep. not just the party, but it's important to note that even academia by the 1990s begins to uh, mirror uh, 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 the, 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 the words that the only place you could find those theories and those ideas was originally in the pages of, 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 of the Burning Spear and the writings of, of, of Chairman O'Malley Yeshitela. It's the chairman in the 1980s and 90s that said, no, nope, you know, domestic internal, uh, uh, domestic colonization, domestic imperialist theory still matters, right? Uh, 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 global world systems theory still matters, right? You know, when, when, when academics were too busy talking about the personal is political uh, 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 and where are, where are worst best enemies, right? So, so, but now it's the party that put out literature that said uh, 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 a prison is the new Jim Crow, right? The party put out that literature and then uh, we see that that is the name of a very popular book right now for the last 10 years. So, so, so this, uh, these are the conditions under which um, uh, 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 Impedum was founded uh, in 1991. Did you want to say something to Charles and then we'll get into these readings? I won't say much because I think the reading will really catapult this even further. You know, we can really get into this, but uh, the, you know, it's a consequence of having a materialist worldview you know, rooted in the African working class. That's the critical thing, a materialist worldview rooted in the African working class. Those are two components that are critical, you know, and we'll say more, I don't want to try to. All right, uh, Uhuru, Uhuru. Now, now, Darius, uh, uh, can, can you pick up uh, with this reading and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll ask, um, uh, uh, we'll ask Tiana to pick up after you, but can you pick up with the reading? It starts on the bottom left hand side of paper underneath a cool uh, and, Jeff, and just to let you, actually, actually, I'll, I'll let the paper, I'll let the article let you all know who a cool and Jerry is. I actually don't have my camera set up right now, and okay. I'm monitoring a whole bunch of things, uh, at the okay. moment. That's okay. Um, okay. I'll start it, I'll start it. 
All right, Uhuru. So, so this the counterinsurgency is genocide in its rawest form. Akua and Jerry. Uhuru, I'm really glad to be here in California because this is the place where it started. Did you know that the Black Panther Party started uh, 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 right here in Oakland, California? Huey P. Newton went around patrolling the community, making sure that borders, that their brothers and sisters didn't get beat up by the pigs when they were arrested. They would also uh, follow the pigs down to the pig station and make sure that the brothers and sisters didn't mysteriously disappear and appear months later dead somewhere. This is also where the African People's Socialist Party's national headquarters is located at the Rural House in Oakland. It is the organization that continues to fight to destroy an oppressive, exploitative, imperialistic government that sucks the lifeblood uh, of poor and oppressed people, uh, not just within the borders of the United States, but all over the world. The United States government got its ass whooped ideologically all over the world in the 60s. In Detroit, Oakland, Chicago, Los Angeles, the District of Columbia, and Vietnam. The same government militarily defeated the Black Revolution of the 60s through a war without terms against pe the people's just uh, 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 pe the people's just struggle for liberation, for freedom. In, in, in case some of you don't know, I'm from Chicago. The name Chicago was, de was derived from a word uh, meaning stinky onion. That is the name that was given to it by the indigenous people of this land, the so-called Indians. The people, uh, the, the, uh, uh, sorry, the people that this government stole the land from. The United States government waged a, a genocidal attack against the entire so-called Indian, Indian population. It, it just did a, 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 I just did a radio interview here in California. I talked about the genocidal war that uh, America uh, has waged against the indigenous population and against people uh, that they stole from uh, uh, from the continent and bred in slavery. I went on to say that this government continues its genocidal attack on the African community in the '60s. Uh, uh, it was it was called COINTELPRO. Today, that same war is called a war on drugs. The host to the to the talk show, uh, who was a North American, a white person got kind of upset. He said, Akua, I don't see how you can compare slavery and massacre of the, in, of the Indian people, which were clearly atrocities to the condition or situation black people are in today or the acts the government is involved in now. I have a little better understanding now about this, about his confusion. You see, it's really hard for white people to even consider uh, uh, the word genocide in their murderous attacks against people of color. The, the fact is the word genocide was coined by white people to explain white people killing other white people. Genocide uh, was a term used to define or to explain the white on white crime of tribal warfare to explain what, what happened to the Jews that also became known as the Holocaust. I want to tell you a little bit more about Chicago. Chicago is the place where the entire world saw the most brutal attack on black liberation on December 4th, 1969, when this government blew Fred Hampton's brains out as he lay sleeping in his bed. Under the leadership of, the, uh, uh, of Fred Hampton, the chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party, over 3,000 children were fed in the Free, uh, free Breakfast for Children program. Under the leadership of Fred Hampton, uh, the, the, the Spurgeon Jakes Winters Free Medical Center was born, which, bro which brought attention to sickle cell anemia. We did screening uh, for the disease that claims the, th that claims the thousands, claims 
of thousands and thousands of African people, claims the lives of thousands and thousands of African people, sorry. Chicago is a living testimony that the counterinsurgency uh, uh, continues in Oakland, in America, just as it does in Oakland and St. Petersburg, Florida, and Berkeley, California, and Wichita, Kansas, and, the, and throughout the US. The government wages a war against oppressed people, which has now come to be known as the war on drugs. The counterinsurgency, this so-called war on drugs, criminalizes a whole class of people, uh, 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 black people in particular. The capitalistic government uses drugs uh, it has put into our community as a justification for the attack on the community. The criminal United States government and its agents, the uh, police forces uh, uh, known by their, know by their own documents that 80% of all drugs use and sell is by white people. African people and other minorities uh, continue to fill up the America's courtrooms and jails as, as, as we are the earliest people to arrest, the easiest people to arrest African people colonized in the US, United States of America are four times more likely to go to prison than African people in South Africa. I want to go back to this uh, concept of genocide for a second. Let's see how it applies to the United States uh, uh, nations, uh, uh, de uh, def uh, it applies here. The United, the, the United Nations defines genocide as the killing of a person uh, uh, the killing of a racial group. Uh, 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 I want to ask you, what are lynchings? What is police brutality? What is committing suicide in jail? What is colonialism? What is capitalism? What is imperialism? Causing serious bodily or mental harm uh, to members of the group. I ask you, what is police brutality? What is the miseducation of, ch uh, of our children? What is the special education what is the denial of health care, uh, uh, which causes infant mortality rates comparable to rates in Guatemala and are, and are, are four times higher than that uh, uh, for whites in this country, deliberately inflicting the, the, the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction. I ask you, what is homelessness? What is the, the, the denial of decent housing to a population of 4 million, mostly African men, women, and children? What is crack cocaine? Imposing measures uh, intended to uh, prevent births with, with in the group. I ask you, what is Norplant? What is the denial of prenatal care? What is mass, massive incarceration of African men? Uh, 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 forcibly transfer, transferring children of one group to another. I ask you, what is integration? What is forced busing? What is the Department of Child and Family Services? As this genocidal war is waged against African people, against poor and oppressed peoples, as our democratic rights, our right to self-determination, our rights to determine our own destiny are repeatedly denied. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do what we're going to do is stand shoulder to shoulder with the oppressed people across the country and say no more. In Chicago on April 6th and 7th of 1991, the founding convention of the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement was held to organize Black people in the courageous fight back in their demand for freedom and self-determination. Out of the convention, in Pedum branches were formed all across the country to deal with uh, with housing lockdowns, the incarceration and murder of African people and the counterinsurgency as it plays out in a so-called war on drugs. The creation of the National People's Democratic uh, 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 Uhuru Movement under the direct leadership of the African People's Socialist Party represents a new mature development for our entire movement. So let us begin uh, to move forward and build the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. There are sign-up sheets at the table straight back there. 
We want people to join this movement as we continue to fight. This time, till it's won. Uhuru, build the impedum. So uh, uh, that's a powerful uh, article. Uh, who knows who uh, in Jerry, Akua and Jerry is. Can somebody kick us off? Who is Akua and Jerry? Uh, 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 who is Akua and Jerry? Uhuru, this is T'Challa. She was, uh, I believe, the first president of uh, Impedum, uh, the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement then. But prior to that, she was uh, a Black Panther, a member of the Black Panther Party, as I understand. And then uh, most many people know her as the wife of the chair of the Chicago chapter of the Black Panthers, uh, the incredible leader, Fred Hampton, who was uh, <laughs> murdered in cold blood, I think in 1968, uh, by the police and FBI as he lay in his bed. Um, after having been set up by his uh, quote unquote bodyguard who was in fact an FBI agent and the FBI, the police, whoever shot him up uh, while, he, while he lay sleeping in his bed drunk off of uh, Kool-Aid that they spiked. And while and Jerry lay next to him and who later said that she could feel the bullets uh, rumble in the bed as she lay there with Fred Hampton who was being gunned down uh, with his child in her womb. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's <clears throat> so so that's just to give some understanding of of this moment in which Impedum was formed and who it was formed by under the leadership of Chairman Omali Yeshitela and the African People's uh, Socialist Party. It's the organization that brought uh, plenty of people like uh, 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 Okua and Jetty uh, and her son Fred Hampton Jr. Uh, back into political life um, uh, 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 at that time. So, 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 uh, what is this counterinsurgency that she describes? Uh, uh, what is her uh, co connection to counter the counterinsurgency? We talked about that, and, and then just to add on to that, we can bring up the second question: uh, Why does and Jerry believe that uh, the term genocide is appropriate to uh, uh, to, to describe uh, 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 the counterinsurgency? And what are some forms of the counterinsurgency that she notes? So um, uh, anybody want to uh, jump into this? And if you want to jump into this, make sure that you uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, uh, start your video. Anybody can cut me off. I just didn't want it to be still, but just cut me off anybody um, if you want to jump in. But, you know, um, you know, this um, incredible African woman comes into political life you know, back into political life after seeing this vicious murder that Chachara just described for us, you know, um, laying in the bed, you know, and even before that, like, you know, um, time before that, uh, so many of the Panthers were hunted down by um, this government. Um, and, you know, uh, the counterinsurgency, we know um, through the records that they released um, that they were writing letters from you know, um, Chicago to Oakland, um, you know, um, stored in beef between um, the organizations. Um, and so she, she not only read about the counting insurgency, she like literally lived, you know, like she lived it. And um, I actually um, had the pleasure of meeting her and um, was asked to speak as a representative of um, the Uhura movement as the international president on a panel um, in Chicago, Illinois, um, where Fred Hampton um, has an event. And I, you know, I got to go to the house where Fred Hampton was murdered in, you know, um, to see, you know, like where this um, mass murder happened at. And there's no other way to describe this event and all the events of all African people's life um, as genocide and so appropriate. And so like, you know, uh, just, you know, like literally was sitting here thinking about that, Mike Odom, like, literally seeing, you know, her laying in the, in the bed as they dumped all these bullets in his body, you know, like she was laying in the bed and then they took her in handcuffs and she ended up um, having the baby 
premature. You know, um, Fred Hampton, of course, you know, the trauma um, that she had just experienced um, from that day and all the days that led up to that um, was just horrific, you know, um, just horrific. And I think that that helped us understand why Tatum had to be built because this vicious attack, you know, um, this war, you know, this murder um, that happened um, to the, um, the Black Panthers and anybody that um, dare say Black power. Um, even our chairman um, say that he spent so much time in jail that he didn't even know what day of the week it was. Um, so, yeah. Ohuru. Ohuru, Ohuru. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, very much for that. Um, yeah, and, and I think that sort of that underscores the, the crucial role that uh, uh, Impedum plays in that counter uh, insurgency. I mean, some of the things that she noted, I love the part that she said that they know from their own documents that 80% of the drug abuse is with white North Americans. Uh, uh, but what I have found that at that time of the federal convictions for crack cocaine, Africans made up over 90% of the federal convictions of crack cocaine. One of the things wow. that I always actually hate when people even talk about crack, they say, oh, because it's a black drug, it's a cheap drug. First off, crack ain't no more cheaper than cocaine. It's Come cocaine. On. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's cocaine. Well, they, 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 it ain't 7-Eleven cocaine or something like that, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> smart, and value, smart value or something. No, it's, it's, it's cocaine. Uh, 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 so, so that's not why, because it's a cheap drug, it's a black drug. It's because the incarceration, it's not even about the drugs, about the party teaches us, African international teaches us the value placed on the lives of African people. It's the excuse. If before that it was, it was, it was PCP, before that it was heroin. After such, it's, it's been things as minuscule as, as marijuana. So the question isn't about the habits of African people, it's about the habits of colonialism, which I think she's pointing out and saying they know that, right? Because from all the research I've done, Africans never uh, have been a disproportionate number of drug users or drug sellers. They were only disproportionately uh, uh, the people who were targeted. Just as we see right now, uh, I think it was in New York, uh, something like uh, of the 40 arrests or something like that made for people violating uh, uh, these um, stay at home orders, 35 of them were of African people, only five of them were of white North Americans, even as we see white North Americans uh, uh, flooding the piers and the beaches uh, of the coastal states, even in defiance of the lockdowns and things like that. Uh, 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 so, 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 so I think that placing that analysis of the actions of colonialism, not sort of the, the Africans being abused by colonialism is crucial. Uh, Comrade Zakele, did you want to say anything? Uh, Comrade Zakele is, is the president of Impedum uh, San, uh, 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 Occupied Azania, Impedum South. Yeah. Uhuru, Comrade, uh, can you hear me? Uhuru, Uhuru. We can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? All right, oh, thank you, brother. Yeah, I would like to greet everyone, comrade, uh, that is listening, and also to salute our chairman, Omali, because it's the one that uh, brought us here with uh, uh, the Uhuru movement, and also salute our president, uh, President Kalambai. Yeah. To jump into these questions, uh, comrade, uh, uh, I've heard you read the, the article, uh, 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 Jerry mentions that the counterinsurgency is also the arrest of Africans. Yeah. She also mentions that uh, Africans in the United States, they are more likely to be arrested than the Africans who are here in occupied Tanzania, but you represent a, a, a minority group. So that is counter insurgency to, to demoralize the people. So I would like to support the, the, that point that you are also facing here in occupied Tanzania during this time, that also the point of, of drugs uh, is also counter insurgency that is brought in the community. Yeah, I, I think it, it does not relate to the question of uh, addictions because uh, the, 
Yeah, in the first place, it's not the people who bring in the districts into the, our community. It's always the state. The police are the ones that uh, bring in the, the drugs that are used in our community. Uh, even here in Occupy Tazan, you can see police delivering uh, the drugs to the community. You cannot have a... Uh, uh, you cannot be a supply of the drugs in the community without having a, a relationship with the state. So I think it's, it's colonialism, it's genocide. They don't want us uh, to be free. Uh, so that's why I think they attack us. The state is there to, to guide the, the African revolution that he, it has not come out. We saw uh, in the 60s when they killed uh, Fred Hampton, that also was a genocide, attacking African people, killing their leaders. So we don't see freedom. Yeah, but uh, I think the Uhuru movement is on the right track here. We're going to free the people. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, comrade. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uhuru. Uh, Uhuru, Uhuru. All right, so, so now, uh, 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 let's pull up the next question. Um, the last question is going to be in, in this section is what is the founding purpose of, uh, uh, well, we've already kind of touched on that, the founding purpose of, of Impedum coming out of its first convention. So uh, I know Comrade Tachara uh, wanted to, to make some important points. We can hear from Comrade Tachara and then even someone else uh, be, before we move to the next. Oh, sorry, Comrade Tachar, you there? Uh, you might not be unmuted yet. Okay, Uhuru, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uhuru, we can hear you. <clears throat> okay, yeah, Are you, I don't know if you're able to see me, but yeah, this is a, um, a really profound uh, subject, you know, and this is one of those, uh, another one of those areas, one of those uh, questions that the party solved, those critical, critical questions. Um, because if you start from the assumption that uh, our revolution didn't get crushed and that it didn't, uh, was not the consequence of a counterinsurgency, you can't understand what's happening today. And like you uh, suggested a minute ago, you end up blaming the victim. You know, so a lot of people know about mm, uh, the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover, lead, the, um, you know, who was leading the FBI at the time. You know, he made this statement about uh, preventing the rise of a black messiah, et cetera, et cetera. And so they put these measures in place that people refer to as COINTELPRO or the counterintelligence program. Uh, but people don't tend to recognize that this thing extended uh, well past the 60s and it has never stopped. Uh, because what happens is that, you know, if you're a slave and you you uprise, you know, you lead a slave rebellion, then when a, the slave catcher try to stop the rebellion, that's counterinsurgency. You, the, the rebellion is the insurgency, and the slave master trying to stop the rebellion is the counterinsurgency. But after a while, <clears throat> those same slave masters will uh, become smart enough and astute enough to not just respond to particular rebellions and particular leaders of rebellions, they'll begin to put measures in place, obviously, to preemptively prevent uh, any kind of rebellion and to destroy the possibility of any kind of rebellion or leadership. So that's what happened to African people. And so after the 1960s, where we led a revolution and part of uh, the way uh, this has been destroyed is to not even call it a revolution. They call it a civil rights movement, but it was it moved beyond the struggle for civil rights and became a struggle for power. And it became a struggle that uh, placed us on the same level uh, that internationalized our struggle so that all of the anti-colonial struggles throughout the world, other African people on the continent, uh, like the comrade right now in South Africa, Occupy Zania, uh, we became, began to internationalize our struggle. And, you know, you had people like Robert Williams who traveled to Cuba and then China 
and you had people like the Chinese revolutionary Mao Zedong and, um, and Cuba Fidel Castro and others um, lending support to our revolution. So you had this real uh, moment in history where the whole edifice of colonial capitalism of US imperialism was under attack. And uh, African people in this country uh, made a cr critical contribution to uh, paralyzing the uh, oppressor within the belly of the beast itself. So they developed this means by which uh, they would prevent the development of any kind of revolutionary struggle again. So, um, you know, just like, a, you know, you got a slave master going back to that, they're gonna give the, you know, they're gonna deploy a force, right? Uh, who we call slave catchers. They were the original police. They deployed this force to prevent an uprising. But eventually they give them a formal name, they call them police. They give them uniforms, uh, they give them policies and procedures, they might give them other duties to do, you know, like they may go to get a cat out of a tree or something for a white person from time to time, uh, you know, but they legitimize the whole process and then they cover over what the real intent is. So following the 1960s, when as she said in the article and as the party says, we defeated the US government ideologically. We defeated capitalism ideologically and the struggle for socialism and power for African workers and colonized people was won ideologically. So they had no choice but to de defeat us militarily because we had not developed the capacity to win militarily. Um, so the, you know, so now they have these measures in place where uh, one of the first things they did, I'll try to be short. The one of the first things they did was for example, Nixon uh, and LBJ did it. Kennedy began to do it before he was murdered. Uh, they began to create methods where they would try to co-opt the black power struggle. So Nixon said, you know, I believe in black power. If by black power, he said by black power, you mean revolution and violence. I don't believe in that. But he said if by black power, you mean black capitalism, black people can have their own banks, black people can do this, but not have their own insurance companies. I believe in that. And he began to fund the creation of a sector of the black community who would work, uh, become a servant sector, a servant class in the name of creating black businesses, but which took the struggle from the workers who were calling for the complete overthrow of colonial capitalism. And instead you have a class who are willing to be, who are dependent financially and politically on the dominant oppressor class. And so one critical component of counterinsurgency was for the US government to create uh, the petty bourgeoisie, you know, a sector of sellouts who are dependent on white power. And so the policing program that you see even in St. Louis that you just mentioned, where you have, you know, boots on the ground kind of policing, um, all of these programs that are supposed to be stopped black on black crime, these are all counterinsurgency methodologies used uh, to, uh, for one control control territory and then to get a sector of the population to work with the police to control the territory and then they become the new political class and then they kind of suppress and destroy the potential revolutionary forces. Uh, and, and then as we said, crack cocaine, um, a counter revolutionary measure, the war on drugs. So they gave us drugs and then they created a war on drugs uh, supposedly to stop the very drugs that they gave us so that they can imprison two uh, million people in, the, in this country, you know, and the vast majority of which are African and uh, Mexican and indigenous. There's more people in prison in the U.S. than China. That's population control. That's resource control. They starved Black communities like they did in St. Louis so that they can uh, force African communities to uh, become deconcentrated so uh, we wouldn't have large numbers of black people in these urban uh, centers that were highly impoverished because they made because they bleed us, you know. So they had to disperse the populations out into uh, uh, counties, and so that's part of a counterinsurgency. That's a long-term plan: 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, five, six decades of slowly starving African communities so that they can drink, they can force people because we have a lack of resources now, lack of services no jobs, so then you force people to begin to disperse. And then they bring in a spy agency like they're doing right now in St. Louis to, to attract now a white, predominantly white population, highly uh, you know, educated, 
in quotations, population, and then gentrification occurs. And then at the same time, they use that spy agency to drop bombs on other oppressed people who they are exercising counterinsurgency measures against as well. So it is how this is genocide. This is what she's saying is genocide. Every way you cut it, this is a social system that requires the ongoing theft and exploitation of the vast majority of the people of the planet. And if you're going to oppress the vast majority of the people, if you're going to exploit the vast majority of people of the planet, you have to oppress them to ensure that they cannot respond to that exploitation. That's what counterinsurgency is. That's why it's genocide. And that's why we have the rural movement and the International People's Democratic Rural Movement. All right, yeah, Uhuru, Uhuru. I think you really summed that up uh, 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 excellent. A uh, couple of things that I, that I really appreciate you driving home uh, in your response uh, 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 is, is the way in which you dialectically underscored uh, uh, what the counterinsurgency uh, is, uh, uh, how it played out. But I really also appreciate the way in which you uh, expand on how, 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 how American uh, imperialism was defeated ideologically, uh, uh, the way in which uh, sort of what happened was a revolution, but they call it a civil rights movement. Uh, uh, um, uh, and, 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 but, but it's because of that, that uh, we were defeated uh, militarily, right? Um, uh, uh, I think that's the shining sort of um, example of African internationalism. Uh, 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 as, as it stands right now uh, uh, with uh, not just colonialism, but neo-colonialism in our path. Uh, I know for a fact that, uh, um, you know, our antagonistic colonial powers, as well as some other uh, petty bourgeois neo-colonial African forces who might view us as, um, who undoubtedly view, who might view us antagonistically, even if we don't view them antagonistically, um, you know, realize that like uh, uh, the, the, the star of African internationalism uh, 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 shines brighter and brighter and, 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 and is the only thing uh, uh, organizing uh, the African working class, African peasantry uh, uh, through, all throughout the African world, but growing, growing on the African continent. I mean, you know, that, that don't have to be mentioned, but, you know, uh, uh, I remember two months ago, two and a half months ago, we were the only ones doing these webinars. We were the only ones with this active uh, of, of presence. But but I've noticed that other forces have 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 picked up this method. But they want to not lead the revolution, but uh, but but sow seeds of confusion with in the minds of the African working class who are looking for for guidance right now. But I know that we're going to win, and we are winning. So yeah. So hopefully. Um, Prez, can you talk a little bit? Actually, you know what? I, I'm, I would love, uh, Prez, uh, uh, the next article that we're talking about uh, is going to be um, uh, your response to uh, uh, Darren Seals. So uh, would you like to comment now on Ferguson and the counterinsurgency, or do you want to comment after we read uh, 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 your obit to uh, Darren Seals? I think I think y'all summed it up great, and so I'll I'll just wait till we you know move on to the next. I think Chachara killed it, <laughs> and um, you know your uh, what you elaborated on was um, great. And I think that going into the next, what we about to go into is going to talk about the counterinsurgency, the ongoing counterinsurgency that we experienced in Ferguson. Uhuru. Uhuru, uhuru. So everybody, let's let's open up that that, that final reading. Uh, I really uh, uh, wanted to um, uh, 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 um, uh, I really wanted to uh, 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 have this reading because this is one of the the first readings in which I, I knew about Colin Bayi and Danette. And, uh, uh, surprisingly, um, I found out that she was the same person I'd found I heard about like the year or two before. Uh, named Herdosha, uh, I, I was honestly confused for a little bit because uh, because they didn't make they you know in the movement they don't make no announcements they don't be like okay you know like blah 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 is this now you just got to put two and two together. <laughs> All right, so yeah, because I remember that was like oh we got this comrade she started this clothing company then it was this other comrade I said man that comrade didn't tip that clothing company from the other comrade, but no it was the same person. 
<laughs> but uh, so so uh, so thank you, Prez. Uh, but I, in all seriousness, let's open up this next article. The article is is um, uh, titled uh, uh, "President uh, and who impeding President Colin Bayi delivers powerful speech at Darren Seals' funeral, September twenty first, two thousand and sixteen, um, and." Uh, 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 we're going to open it up. Tiana, are you there? Are you able to, to, to pick this up? Oh, yes. Okay, so in Pedem, President Columbaye delivers powerful speech at Darren Seals' funeral. President Columbaye calls on the attendees of Darren Seals' funeral to unite towards African freedom. Ferguson, Missouri. Missouri. The body of Darren Seals was found in a burning car two weeks ago with a bullet to the head. His funeral service was held on Saturday, September 17, 2016. A coincidence, coincidentally, the service took place on the same day and just upstairs in the same building as the Impedum 25th anniversary convention. Impedum's president, Kalambayi Adonet, also from St. Louis and friend of Seals was invited to speak at the service. After finishing her convention address, she quickly ran upstairs to the packed sanctuary of the Greater St. Mark's Church, where she delivered Alambayi opened up by offering her condolences to the mother and family of Darren Seals. She recalled, just like Darren, August 9th, 2014, my life changed because I saw Mike Brown laying in the street like that. Columbia explained that she lost two brothers and her oldest nephew. One of her brothers she lost to horizontal or black on black violence. But the president outlined to the attendees that horizontal violence is still the state. Everything in our community is placed there by the state strategically for a reason. She continued, it's time to unite but we have to define what unite means because we can't unite over just anything. We have to unite as a people and say enough is enough. We have to have a structure that will keep us safe as she encouraged the people to join the Uhuru movement. We have to know our enemy. We have to understand that it's time to be a part of something that is solid. Darren was looking for that. Columbia expressed to the attentive attendees that the black community has to get to a place but we prevent the state from murdering our people. She then urged them to join a revolutionary organization and become a part of a solid body. Kalambayi continued, sisters and brothers, the task at hand is for us to get free. She expressed that regardless of what religion we observe, the bottom line is that we are Africans and, we, and we're dying. It's time to unite. The church erupted in applause, raised fists and shouts of Uhuru. Kalambayi in her closing remarks illustrated that the African liberation struggle is worldwide. The struggle in Ferguson is in California. The struggle in California is New York. The struggle in Ghana, Africa is the same struggle we're struggling for right, now, right here. We have to understand we cannot be bamboozled any longer. And Pilum's president outlined the importance of learning from past mistakes within the struggle. Darren Steele's, our brother had a powerful message but he needed a force, an army that was organized, that understood when it's time to go to the left and when it's time to go to the right. If you're here because you gotta get free, come and join me. The entire church was consumed with applause as attendees shouted Uhuru. Kalambayi expressed to Darren's mother, I wanna salute this mother. I love you and I hate that you have to sit there. But let me tell you, Darren will never be forgotten as long as I got breath in my body. And when the breath leaves my body, the Uhuru movement will be moving because the movement will move on over whoever is in our way, Uhuru. The, the attendees were absolutely inspired. Kalambayi made them feel uplifted with her powerful speech as they rose to their feet in thunderous applause. They shouted Uhuru when Kalambayi chanted, touch one, they triumphantly, triumphantly responded, touch all. This is the power of our impedum president. This is the power of our movement. Uhuru. 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 Um, yeah, so so let's open up uh, these questions. Uh, uh, I want to say first and foremost that 
Um, the reason why uh, uh, I chose this article, I was moving between two different articles. One article had to do with uh, when uh, Columbia, President Columbia became president of Impedum. Uh, it was at that time that an all uh, African woman uh, leadership was elected uh, uh, as the leadership of Impedum. And I think the thing that sort of really stands out uh, uh, from so many people who always comment, they say, man, those are some dynamic African women that y'all have uh, 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 in, in that organization. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and I think that sort of that grounds uh, uh, African internationalism uh, uh, as the pathway towards liberation for uh, all African women. Uh, I mean, so all African people, uh, uh, and it's a struggle uh, 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 at this point, it, that is led uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Chairman Omali Eshatela by um, uh, 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 dynamic, uh, but also principled African internationalist leadership of people like uh, President Kalambayi uh, 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 and Danette. But it also underscores the centrality of impedum. Uh, 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 to, uh, to, to this phase of struggle uh, where, where we sort of uh, look at this very first question and say, so like, 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 like just the coincidences that Impedum's convention, that, that, that Impedum was there at the funeral and it was President Colin Bailly who was sought uh, to come and speak. So um, uh, the first question is who was Darren Seals? Why and how did uh, President Kalambayi happened to speak at the funeral. What does this suggest about the origins of the contemporary formation of Impedum and its commitment to real revolutionary change in St. Louis and elsewhere? So uh, did you want to kick that off for us? And, and, and then we got uh, some other people on the panel who haven't necessarily spoken. So uh, after Prez, um, uh, if you'd like to comment, maybe uh, Faux Feet, who's also in St. Louis, uh, uh, Demetrius, uh, Marissa, Marquise, um, uh, uh, do so. Oh, okay, my mute is uh, Uhuru. Yeah, um, so I, I really want to again appreciate the discussion and who was uh, Darren Seals? Um, Darren Seals was a, um, a young African that grew up in St. Louis. Um, I met Darren Seals um, because I worked at a, a popular um, urban uh, shoe store that sell like, you know, Jordan, uh, K, you know, like shoes, tennis shoes. And so um, that's where I first met Darren Seals. And he actually um, did rap, you know, he did music as well. So he was pretty known in St. Louis before um, Mike Brown died um, from doing music and, um, you know, that scene. And so at, when Mike Brown died, um, Darren Seals got very involved and he was very uh, vocal about how he felt. And he, um, you know, to understand Ferguson is to understand like counterinsurgency. Like I didn't know anything about counterinsurgency um, at that time when I met the movement, but knowing now exactly like it's just carbon copy. Like they just pull it out the book and just use the same, um, you know, things. And so Darren Seals seen it and he spoke of it. He seen the money that um, the Foros money, the uh, Ford money, all the money that was dumped into Ferguson. Darren Seals seen it and he spoke on it. He seen how, um, you know, so-called leaders were getting in front of the movement, changing the narrative where Africans were saying, kill the police, and now we're saying, hands up, don't shoot. And so Darren, he was very vocal about that. Um, and he was an organizer. And so that's who Darren Seals was, um, well, well respected, well loved um, um, in the black community here in um, St. Louis. Uh, and how did, um, how did I uh, happen to be at that funeral? Well, like you said, we were having a convention downstairs at um, St. Mark's Church in Ferguson, Missouri. Um, and uh, Darren Seals' funeral was upstairs um, at the same church that we was having our convention. But uh, I knew I was gonna be speaking at the funeral. Um, a family, um, his actually his mother um, got in contact with me and asked 
if I would represent the movement um, at the, you know, she would really um, like if, if I do that, that she had talked to um, friends of Darren that she trusted because she let me know that, you know, she was very leery of everything about um, what happened because Darren Seals was found in a car where someone called him that he knew and he met them um, where his car was torched and um, he was um, shot in his car um, dead. And so his mom asked me to speak at the funeral um, to represent the Uhuru movement. And um, so, and it was the same day as the funeral. So the, um, the convention, uh, it was the same day as the convention. And so, um, you know, I think that this was very significant. Um, I don't think I ever been, um, well, I'm always nervous to speak kind of. And, but Darren Seals um, funeral, the whole um, movement was there. And at this time, um, I had met Chairman Amalia Chatella that had, um, you know, had dumped, you know, we had the black grand jury by this time. We have had the um, many intensive, a lot of political education was dumped in. And so everything that you heard me say on that stage was, you know, African and nationalists that had gave me a, a view of being able to understand the circumstances that was happening that we could not let the petty bourgeoisie continue to lead the movement that was really jumping in front of this struggle. Um, and so um, if PDUM had to be put on the ground in a real way um, in St. Louis and the party came and did just that, um, put a mass organization to meet the masses, um, you know, and, you know, really um, have something for the African working class because the, you know, the white left and the petty bourgeoisie um, was not trying to let that happen. But I'm gonna stop there so others can speak. Um, but I just think that um, really appreciate this discussion and say that this right here took me back, um, you know, and see the growth and the development of PDOM and see the growth and development even in myself, um, you know, as the international president um, from then to now. So Uhuru. All right, Uhuru. Uh, Fofi, did you want to uh, say anything? Because if not, uh, I got some stuff I'd, I'd like to say. Yeah. But Fofi. Yeah, um, Uhuru, <laughs> I was on mute. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to say uh, I appreciate this because, like Columbia, it takes me back. And at that time, I think Columbia had just come back from cadre intensive, and that was a month. So in St. Louis, I was still here. I hadn't one hundred percent committed to um, cadre ness. <laughs> uh, but right after that, I became president of Impedum Local, St. Louis, which changed my life. Um, I think I surprised Columbia when I said I would be president. She said, for real? So um, after that, that when she spoke at that funeral, it was a lot going on because um, they, people were questioning the, the Uhuru movement and then PDUM because they didn't know who we were. And they questioned what was behind it, what we were about. Uh, with her speaking, it let people know that were pointing the finger and whispering who we were and we were nobody to play with. Um, I think that was a turning point for the acceptance of Impedum in St. Louis. It was still a little rough after that, but you know what? We made it happen and I'm just, um, glad to be a part of the uh, African People's Socialist Party and uh, on the IEC of, the, of NPDOM. Uhuru. Uhuru, 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 Uhuru. Yeah, uh, let's move to the next question. Oh, so, so, so Prez Combi talks about this idea of true unity, true unity. Uh, so um, uh, for some of you participants, uh, I'm imploring you all to, to chime in. Um, uh, 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 how does President Columbia define uh, this idea of, of true unity? Um, uh, uh, how, how might you even uh, uh, see 
uh, 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 this true unity uh, 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 in action, in accordance to what we've been talking about today. Marquise, uh, Demetrius, Uhuru. Uhuru Marquise. Uh, one thing I got from the reading was that she, uh, it's just not a call for unity for, for its own sake, but to, but connecting the struggles around the, the world that black folk go through or African people go through, whether it's in California, Oakland or LA or New York or, or Ghana, she's connecting it all and saying that it's the same struggle uh, and that the unity should be around that, uh, around fighting the struggle and, 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 and getting freedom. Uhuru, Uhuru, anybody else? Oh, oh my, um, comrade, you know what I want you to, I want you to elaborate on what I'm ready to say. Um, but you know, one of the things that was happening in Ferguson, um, what I, when that led me to say that is um, chairman was beating it, beating the horse to say that, you know, this is what they said in um, the 60s that outsiders, and they were trying to say that people that was coming into Ferguson, um, you know, protesting or whatever, well, they outsiders, you know, you can't be upset um, or you can't leave this struggle if you're not from here. And what do they even mean? <laughs> what do they even mean? You know, that's counterinsurgency. Um, and that's what they, you don't hear that so much no more. But I, I believe that that was the hard work that, um, you know, Chairman just continued to just help us understand that they cannot, you know, um, separate us by borders and say, oh, I can't struggle for uh, what's happening in South Africa, or you can't struggle about what's happening in San Diego. You know, um, we have to unite, you know, and understand that this is genocide. So I was just wondering if you could say a little bit more about that. And that's the, you know, and that was one of the things that I was trying to win the unity to understand that, you know, this is our fight, no matter where we are. Well, well, well yeah, because um, to me, this this actually uh, links directly to um, a section in the uh, eighth uh, and to, 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 uh, to the 2018 uh, report to the uh, seventh Congress, uh, in which uh, Chairman O'Malley Eshetela writes. Um, uh, 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 African students, many with petty bourgeois aspirations of their own or misdirected uh, 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 by assumptions of colonial defined education, sometimes militantly rush to the forefront of the mass movements, blithely regurgitating political conclusions uh, from colonial civics classes, right? Which is, I think, what you were talking about there. Uh, 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 there's a way through which the local though the local is political and all this other stuff, um, uh, the way in which people from the universities come in uh, with their ideas, their miss, what I actually say, honestly say the misrepresentation of the teachings of Ella Baker as well. We lift up Ella Baker in, in the rural movement, but there's this way through which they've sort of use Ella Baker's teachings almost as a form of anarchism through which there's no revolutionary movement and no revolutionary purpose. And that's not what she was even talking about, right? I mean, you couldn't have had uh, a SNCC, whether you agree without, you know, uh, 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 the very long and sort of deliberate sort of struggle. So, so I, I so I, we can talk more about that, but just uh, uh, the way in which he, he, he talks about that, that's, that's what you were noting. Uh, uh, so, so he goes on to say that um, uh, the range of forces combined with the conscious opportunists are determined to smother uh, uh, the ability to advance long-term revolutionary conclusions that answer the question, to what end? This gives greater urgency than ever to the role of impedum. Our party encountered these forces upon our arrival in Ferguson. This is exactly what uh, uh, Prez was talking about. None of these forces are new to us. The truth is that Africans suffer colonial oppression, oppression that affects the entire African nation. It is logical that non-proletarian forces 
will, will, will move to take the leadership of, uh, uh, of the response to colonial brutality, uh, all of them have more resources and, and, and meet the standards of bourgeois media compared to the African working class. Because I get that all the time. Man, this is just so dynamic. Webinar, how come they don't have you all on MSNBC? How come they don't have you all on CNN? You know, what's the ball guy who cries all the time? Why is he on CNN? And why, you know, a, a guy who was in the Bay Area in the early 90s, right? It's, it's, it's not a coincidence that these people, like I said, all these ideas have come out of uh, these, uh, these academics who were in Berkeley and Oakland in the early uh, 1990s and the late 80s when the chairman was there. Um, uh, 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 but then produced these watered down nonprofit think tanks meant to, 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 to steer whatever successes we win back towards the graveyard of, polit of social movements uh, that is the Democratic Party. Uh, so, 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 um, so, so, so the chairman, uh, uh, he talks about that, but he goes on to say this, this is for us. He says, the contradiction in Pedum was, in, was, uh, was formed to overcome is the absence of organized leadership of the proletariat. In Pedum, as an organization of our party has to be present to directly contend with the non-proletarian forces for the leadership of our people. The presence of opportunist petty bourgeois uh, forces in mass struggle should not be used as an excuse for our lack of participation. Such a failure to intervene would be the basis for self-criticism, for, for relinquishing the con the field of combat to non-revolutionary forces, and, and, and this is isn't African internationalism teaches this isn't just a contradiction embedded to to to, to, to the U.S. Uh, or to Ferguson, uh, but instead, I mean, you know, we the, the chairman writes heavily about the way in which the anti-colonial struggles uh, uh, of in Africa were 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 opportunistically commandeered commandeered by the uh, 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 African uh, petty bourgeoisie, uh, 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 whom which still uh, uh, govern uh, in regimes that are just as brutal, if not sometimes even more brutal than the colonial regimes in which they uh, took over. Uh, the, the the prisons in South Africa. There are more people in prison in South Africa now uh, than there were people imprisoned for um, uh, uh, imprisoned during the height of of, of apartheid. Uh, uh, we noticed that uh, the state of emergency was put in place right now for the first time since apartheid. So you have a whole generation of Africans who never lived under the state of emergency, but the but the ANC run state um, uh, 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 has 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 resorted to the exact same tactics as the uh, uh, Afrikaner National Party uh, uh, had had resorted to. But that isn't a sort of meaning for us to, to, to not engage, right? That's even more purpose for us to engage. So let's hear a couple more people. Um, uh, uh, we'll wrap this section up in a, in a couple minutes. Um, and um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this section up in a couple minutes, but let's hear a couple more responses. Did you want to jump in there, T'Chara? And uh, uh, yeah. whoever else wants to jump in. Uh, I sort of gave a little bit of a shout out to the uh, a little bit of bait to the comrades from uh, Occupy Designer, but they might not be on anymore. But um, yeah, Uhuru, I mean, what a fantastic discussion. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Ferguson. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I didn't come into the movement at the early point of the movement being, uh, well, not as early as some of the other comrades, like Fofit and uh, President Columbia, who met the party really early on. but. You know, we saw counterinsurgency um, put down in a real serious way in Ferguson. You know, first of all, you had the FBI come in with military tanks and military equipment, and that was no accident. That's a consequence of the FBI and the state police. I mean, and the and police department, local police departments. They had built up this arsenal of military equipment that, over time, was being strategically funneled. To local police stations for this very kind of this very thing that we saw in Ferguson, this uprising of these Africans. 
um, where and they had this so-called exchange program, 1030, 1033 or something, exchange program where supposedly uh, surplus military equipment could be given to police. But every year they give the surplus you know, equipment to the police. So it's obviously just the cover up to funnel military equipment to the police. So we saw the whole police, the whole state apparatus armed to the teeth with military tanks out on the streets um, and all kinds of military equipment ready to uh, deal with the Africans who were righteously rising up uh, from for the naked murder of this African who was left to rot there in the, in the heat, as we say, in the movement for four hours. Uh, and yet white people bought up all the guns in the St. Louis area, uh, but nobody targeted the white people who bought up all the guns. And in fact, what the FBI did was to set up, I think it was three Africans, they actually coaxed them into um, uh, um, uh, some kind of a plot to uh, bomb something or something. They had no intent on doing anything like that, but the FBI uh, coaxed them into doing that and locked them up in prison. So you saw that aspect of it. But then as someone said, you had you saw like the Ford Foundation, for example, uh, which was a foundation that was created um, and really funded more in the uh, 1960s and 70s. It was created, I think, after the Second Imperialist War, but this the Ford Foundation that was funded for this very thing so that they can take these, these uprisings, potential revolutions, and uh, they could use money from uh, white philanthropists, capitalist philanthropists uh, who wanted to ensure that uh, capitalism could not be challenged. Uh, they would use think tanks and use universities and they would dump money into everything black so that they can uh, create, churn out a liberal, non-threatening uh, version of black this or black that. So they funded black studies programs. They funded all kinds of leadership programs. And they and, and when we talked about the COINTEL probe wanting to prevent the rise of a, a black messiah, they decided who the black messiah, you know, what I mean, who black leadership would be. So they funded programs to lift up black leadership. And then you had another example, and I'll cut it off after this, is George Soros, who's this Hungarian-born billionaire who um, you know made billions of dollars in the stock market, then retired and took up a new occupation of funding counter-revolutionary movements to destroy revolutionary movements across the planet. And he even went back into the stock market to make more money, to have more money to fund it. And so he would go around the former Soviet states that, you know, when the Soviet Union was destroyed and began to collapse because of the limitations there, he began to fund all the bunch of different governments across the former Soviet Union to try to turn them capitalists. And so he dumped you know, millions of dollars into Ferguson and uh, he dumped money into Black Lives Matter. And so now you have this philosophy of Black Lives Matter, hands up, don't shoot. And it took it out of the hands of the African working class who, as we said at the time was saying, uh, you know, kill the police. And we're not saying that they had the capacity to do that but it represented a different politic that could not be bought. And so, uh, you know, now you have this whole, and then the other thing Soros, one of his strategies is to, he's, is to fund anything that's non-revolutionary. You know, so I don't care what it is. If it uh, has principles that do not coincide with the principles necessary to build a revolution, he funds it. You know, I don't care if it's a good tar club or whatever. You create a whole sector, a whole apparatus of a uh, petty bourgeoisie you know, sell out uh, um, social service, you know, agents throughout the throughout this city or whatever. And so that's what he did. And so we see it now. We see all of these people who many of them call themselves protesters. They're not running for office and uh, any potential that the movement have for any kind of revolutionary outcome has been controlled by sellouts who uh, now just want to get reelected and are in the service of the white ruling class. Um, yeah, Uhuru, Uhuru. I mean, that was strong, but it was needed, right? I mean, uh, uh, in, 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 in the way in which you materially uh, laid it out, I mean, like I said, it's not a coincidence as a person who myself works uh, in academia. Um, uh, it's not, like with the funding strategy, 
uh, we have to honestly look at the funding strategy as a part of the, the, the counterinsurgency. You know, long gone are the days in which, you know, they bring some white dude and in in, in a fake mustache and, a, and, and some dark glasses and, and stuff like that and, and, and report back. They don't need to report back when all they have to do is give you a grant and then every single year uh, make you report on the things that you've done for that grant. Uh, 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 and then you find out that that the State Department funds their funds them and, and, and they fund the organizations, uh, uh, which therefore makes all of your documents privy to the State Department right down the hall from the intelligence agencies, right? So, so, so it's not a coincidence, but, but what Pres Columbine noted was that the people they were coming across, you know, because we hear this all the time, let's be honest, you know. Uh, we hear people say things like, I say, hey, why don't you go over to Black Power Blueprint? Why don't you go uh, look at Black Tobacco? Well, well, we believe in autonomy. Um, uh, 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 you, know, we, you, you know, we believe, we don't believe in people parachuting in. And then the very next week, you see that some random nonprofit person is going to be giving a lecture at their group. And this person exactly. is from San Francisco, Washington, D.C. So wait a minute. So you don't believe in Africans who have a 50 plus year tried tested history in, 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 in winning struggles for African people and African liberation, the only group that is not some sort of uh, 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 NGO that is international. Uh, uh, you don't believe in them coming uh, and, and helping people organize, but you know, blah, 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 foundation can come in and organize. It's, it's not that, you know, when all these people are saying the same things, it's not a coincidence, right? That's why we also know that we're in a war for ideas as well, right? African internationalism is engaged strongly in a war for ideas, um, uh, uh, but, but, but uh, uh, for, uh, as well as for, for the material uh, struggles for our people. So, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, and I think we already hit that last question about sort of the importance and the cruciality of revolutionary uh, organization uh, uh, to, the, to the African working class. Because, I mean, I think about Prez, I think about so many others that were in that Ferguson uprising, uh, 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 of which the, 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 the discipline, the organization, of the, the APSP and Impedum uh, have protected and uplifted at, at important times of, of our struggle. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that being a way for us for us to move forward. You know, this isn't just a question that, that say we have come into as well. You know, um, I was reading recently uh, VI Lennon's What is to be Done, right? And one of the things that he notes as well is that, uh, and I'll make the note, like Lennon started a paper, it was called The Spark, but we got something that burned even brighter than, uh, 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 than a spark. We got a burning spear, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and but, 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 but one thing he said, he says, look, uh, so you got people who say it's all about sort of economism, a sort of like a labor organizing, right? And then you got sort of uh, um, the way in which the academics at that time would talk about the masses, but it's almost like the, these opportunistic wanted and, and, and uneducated, unorganized masses, you know, um, uh, 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 and uh, uneducated and unorganized masses. Uh, so, 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 and that's not what we're about, right? We're about an educated, informed, organized, a mass, a uh, revolutionary, a mass of, of the African working class. Um, uh, armed with African internationalism. Uh, Marissa, Marissa wanted to say something. Yes, hi, um, this is Marissa Martinez and uh, I am the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement's secretary. And it is my honor to uh, work under the leadership of President Klumbayi and uh, uh, following uh, African working class leadership um, founded by Chairman Amalia Shetela. And uh, the, the party is just um, doing magnificent work. Everybody uh, is working so hard in, uh, during this time period to uh, lead the African working class. And I, um, as an indigenous woman um, who is also colonized, I see the revolutionary vision and leadership of, of the African People's Socialist Party 
uh, to lead the masses and to overturn the social system that was created from the theft of the Americas and, uh, the, and the genocide um, and continued enslavement and torture and murder uh, and structural violence that this system has, has, put, has uh, imposed on us. And um, so Impedum, you know, began as a, a, as a uh, you know, to take on the counterinsurgency. And in this time period, uh, with our abilities to be organized, um, we are, you know, moving um, with the leadership of the party, we're moving and, and we're in um, townships and cities and we are being uh, led um, to carry out revolutionary organization on the ground. And so Impedum gets to work with the community um, with that leadership and, uh, and that accountability and uh, amazing things can happen in organization. And that is how we will save people's lives. That is how we will free people from, um, from the gates of hell inside those colonial prisons and um, how we will win, how we will um, transform the society. Uh, and uh, we will be in the, you know, this is the future. The future is going to be people being organized and fighting back um, that we cannot allow this system to go on any longer. So I'm just really glad to be a part of this work, part of Impedum. And uh, thank you for this, uh, this study, her. Uhuru, uhuru. So um, if, uh, are there any more comments that can maybe sum it up very quickly and then we'll move towards the, uh, the, the final business items of today's meeting? Hi, this is uh, Fofi. I just want to say during the time of um, during the time of that funeral and the, the uh, convention, from then, I've learned the meaning of touch one, touch all. Because if you touch one, it should infuriate us enough to know that they've touched us. Um, when a tragedy happens or a genocide happens, it may not happen on your block, in your city, or even in your state. But whenever and wherever it happens, we need to take arms and fight back because it happened to us. Because when you do touch one in this organization and in mankind all along, all Africans, when you touch one, you touch all. And that's the meaning that I have um, embedded with being in, in PDOM. Uhuru. Uhuru, 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 uhuru. All right, so so let's uh, 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 let's move to to, 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 to to the business portion of this I, uh, of this meeting, unless uh, Press Kalambai or Tachara want to say anything else. I don't have anything. Uhuru. Okay. Uhuru, uhuru, uhuru. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, like I said, this is very dynamic. It's growing. Uh, the uh, you know, I have to be honest. As they try to reopen these cities, I, I don't see. I see the reopening of the cities undoubtedly uh, as another form of counterinsurgency, right? Uh, 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 um, uh, of, of because it, you know they 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 know of clearly the work that we are doing, the mobilization, uh, of the the. The, the, the clarity of the contradictions of parasitic capitalism under which we live and stuff like that. So, so, um, so yeah, I really see that, you know, cause part of what, you know, uh, it's, you know, this whole thing, it's not just about say, you know, buying and selling things. It's also about training people, right? You know, uh, they know that these last two and a half months for some of us, uh, 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 you know, they, 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 I feel like they, you know, so I don't want to get too much into that, but, 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 but the original purpose, you know, we started this 
um, at the beginning of the of the shutdowns um, because it was a face to face class. Uh, 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 but it's growing, it's developing to something even more. Uh, uh, and we and we want to take this <clears throat> uh, 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 beyond those uh, 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 those other colonial borders, the colonial borders into uh, uh, prisons. Uh, the, the the colonial walls of, of, of prisons as well. So um, today, when we uh, uh, call for membership and also call for 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 uh, resources, um, uh, I want us to uh, directly uh, turn those resources to. Um, uh, uh, I want us to directly uh, uh, turn those resources uh, to uh, subscriptions. Uh, 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 my goal is that we could bring in fifty dollars. That fifty dollars that you give goes towards this study group and goes towards uh, buying uh, Burning Spear donations and even um, uh, 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 George Jackson level and PETA memberships for our incarcerated uh, brothers and sisters uh, 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 locked in those colonial uh, concentration camps. Um, uh, uh, one of which uh, uh, recently published an amazing letter on the burning spear, and I and, and I like you all to go and and check out his. His name is Bub. Bub was it Bub Thomas? Uh, so 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 go and, and check out that letter um, uh, uh, as well. So um, there are uh, uh, just a couple questions. I'm going to answer them very quickly, but I want to let you all know that we are following you all on Facebook. So I do want to answer them just very quickly. I'll even try to answer them myself, if not to Chara or, or Press Columbia, but we'll answer them very quickly. We're about five minutes over. Uh, after that, we'll do the call for donations. We'll do the call for, for, for memberships. And then I'll do a couple more announcements and then uh, we will adjourn. So, um, uh, uh, let's pull up those questions real quick uh, from, from viewers. All right, so the first question is, how do we defeat biological assassination injected through resources we're dependent on? Uh, so the coronavirus, this person says is man-made. How do we defeat it uh, if it's injected in, in the resources uh, we're dependent on. Uh, well, first and foremost, what I would say is that um, uh, what we didn't talk about, but I think sort of T'Chara uh, 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 is going to talk about also on Sunday as a part of the, the live stream, is, is the importance of building a dual power, dual and contending power. Uh, so, so one thing we talked about last week on the live stream is that um, uh, farming and stuff like that uh, making sure we have our own resources uh, uh, to live and so to sustain ourselves isn't just, they say, a survival list or sort of anarchical uh, uh, um, uh, a thing, but, but, but it's really about building a, 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 a dual power. I mean, so, uh, you know, moving away from, from, from uh, sort of a reluctance of the colonial systems, the colonial grocery stores and uh, colonial medicine even. Uh, that this is the purpose of Black Power Bl Blueprint. This is the purpose of All African People's Development and Empowerment Project uh, um, and stuff like that as we build African solutions towards uh, the problems of, of colonialism. Uh, did I sum that up well, Char? Anything else you want to add to that question? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's not going to happen through a proclamation. Uh, you know, a thou shall or thou shall not, you have to organize, you know, and then we have to have a strategy um, for liberation. And that's what the African People's Socialist Party is. That's what the work of PETAM is doing, uh, the mass organization of the African People's Socialist Party. And like you say, the Black Power Blueprint, for example, building dual and contending power, where we contend side by side uh, <clears throat> for resources, uh, from the colonialist capitalist state um, and with the end goal of overturning, defeating the colonial capitalist state. And you have to build a movement. That's what we've been talking about. That's what President Columbia is doing and what she's been talking about. You have to build a movement. There's no other way it can happen. 
you can't just declare that people need to spend their money differently or whatnot. You have to build a movement that strategically fights for power and you got to be a part of it. Uh, 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 get organized. Uh, press con by Yeah, just real quickly. I know we over time. So um, I just want to unite with Chachara and say, you know, um, is, you know, um, what Chachara just said, and I just wanted to add the Africans have to be brought back into understanding like what it even means to have power. And uh, what we're going to do, wait to white power decide to free us or give us stuff and make us feel good? No, that's not going to happen. So we're going to have to fight with a um, foot in our throat. You know, we have to learn how to, what self-determination look like. And you learn that through organization, you know, um, edu um, political education, um, practical work, you know, um, uh, being in meetings, setting an agenda, learning how to write a POA, which is a plan of action, you know, carrying it out, selling the burning spirit newspaper, all these things are bringing us back into this, um, holding our head up and saying that um, I, I have um, full confidence in my ability to have power over my own natural born life. Um, you know, we've been pushed out of that um, and we have to be brought back into that. And that's why it's so important to have contending and dual powers. And, uh, you know, I know we haven't, like you said, um, the Midwest, I mean, the region strategy is so critical to the development of all these different things. So, um, you know, I just, that's what I just wanted to add to that is that like Chachara said, organization, we have to be brought back into organization because if we pass out guns, like Chairman said, we pass out guns to everybody on the North side of St. Louis right now, uh, we'll fall victim of it. Um, we have to pass out a burning spirit to everybody on the North side and um, bring them into political education and teach them how to think um, before we put a gun in anybody's hand. You know what I mean? Um, not saying we're putting guns in people's hands, but you understand what I'm saying. Exactly, exactly. That's for the people that have cut this video off at that part. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They'll be like, cut. Okay, <laughs> we'll be on Fox News. <laughs> Sorry, but yes, 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 exactly, exactly. No, no, I, 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 I mean, that exactly is true because you know, I was thinking about that. I mean, sorry, we going over, but this brother that died, you know, and 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 I want to tell people, I know how you feel. We don't even have to write down how you feel because I know we all feel in the exact same way. But I wish all y'all would then just come to impede him. You come to impede him. Come to impede him. You know, because 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 because. Yes. Uh, Fred Hampton, we just talked about, rest in peace, he talked about customerism. We don't need no custer last stands. You know what I mean? We need organization, right? Uh, 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 the white anarchists who called themselves the friends of the Black Panther <coughs> went out in Chicago and had this thing called the Days of Rage, right? The Days of Rage. And the Days of Rage just brought back so much heat to Black folks. White folks went out destroying stuff. Uh, 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 fighting the police and what the police do. They came back and beat black people. They came to the south side and beat black people and to the west side of Chicago and beat black people. So so we don't need sort of custer last stands. Uh, uh, we don't need uh, just like I said, sort of individualistic anarcho uh, anarchism. You know, we need organization. We need African internationalism. That's the purpose here. Like I said, I know that that's how everyone feels, you know, but that is what we need so um <clears throat> so uh let's move to the cause call for donation did you want to say something for feet for feet i just wanted to say we need to bring our bring our people to the realization that the only way to win is to organize right the only way to win is to organize right we will only win if we are if we are organized. Um, the goal is $50, comrade. Yeah, so the goal is $50, $50. And this- 50. I got 50, so, oh, okay. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, oh, no. um, <laughs> all right, anybody got 40? Uh, 25, I got 25. So we can add that 50 to the 25, uh, 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 20. Yeah, 20. 
Oh, hoo, hoo. So we got 20, so that's 95, uh, 15. Uh, 10. I just gave 10 online. Okay. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Oh, so uh, that is, uh, I want to say 105 and five. So, so that's great. We over doubled, doubled our, 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 our donations. If you want to make a donation that's from the live stream, go to inpdum.org slash donate. Uh, 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 and remember that all your funds go directly to, 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 to the movement and, 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 to, and to the struggle. Uh, the funds tonight we're going to use towards um, uh, getting memberships and burning spears uh, to, to, to Africans that are incarcerated. Um, I got five. Oh, you got five on it. Shout out to Oakland. <laughs> That's great. Gotta get, get those fives, man. Gotta get those fives. Hey, I know. Hey, hey, people don't realize them fives add up. Um, and, and, and memberships. So like I said, I mean, I hope is, uh, so So, what I, if there's anybody here viewing that would like to go to membership, once again, go to impedem.org uh, and, and, and sign up for membership. I'm really calling on you all to sign up for membership because we because we must get organized. But, uh, but, but my goal is for us to uh, fund at least four uh, uh, Africans that are uh, uh, behind the walls um, uh, to be uh, George Jackson members of, of, of Impedum. Let's build Impedum behind them walls. Let's build Impedum out here uh, as well. Let's build Impedum internationally. Um, so, so yeah. So uh, at that moment, at that point, we can adjourn. Oh, actually, sorry. Last, I want to give you all some, some last announcements. Once again, tune in every Sunday for, for, for O'Malley Taught Me. Uh, 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 on Burning Spear TV, also on Facebook. I want to give a shout out to all the international viewers, uh, a sort of a salute to all international viewers who are watching in, uh, in Occupied Azania, in West Africa, uh, in the UK, in France, and then also to Comrade Nasir all the way in Kuwait, who, 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 who is diligently uh, watching. And if you see this, Comrade Nasir, I'm calling on you to go and click that membership button and, let, and, and let's build uh, uh, Impedum uh, uh, in Kuwait, in the UAE, uh, uh, in Yemen, um, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, where we know those revolutionary struggles uh, are, are going on uh, as well. Um, uh, so, so, so just very quickly, announcements, and then we'll adjourn. Um, uh, so so to, so tomorrow uh, at 12 p.m. BST British Standard Time. So that's going to be around 7 a.m. Um, uh, tune in for Africa Must Unite with uh, Chairman, uh, sorry, Secretary General Luizi Kinshasa. Uh, uh, you can find that live on Facebook uh, from the African Internationalist webpage Uhuru A ASI. Um, you can also tomorrow afternoon, sorry, tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. EDT, 6 p.m. PDT. Uh, you got quarantine and chill Afrobeat uh, uh, edition. Um, uh, then uh, also Sunday, May 10th from 1 to 3, you have Ann Woe's uh, uh, webinar, uh, uh, The Struggle Against Mass Incarceration's Impact on African Women. That afternoon, we're going to hear a uh, comrade uh, to, uh, to Charles Masimba, uh, 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 Director Akile Anai, uh, President Yeshide or or Mila, uh, 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 Comrade Kundai, and uh, President uh, Kalambayi and Danette on the um, Economic and, and Political R1 webinar. Uh, tune into the Impedum page for that. Um, uh, uh, on Tuesday, we got Reparations in Action weekly radio show. Also, tune in to uh, 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 to, to uh, uh, tune in to a very, very, very excellent podcast. Go download Podbean, Podbean podcast app, and and listen to 
um, a, a, a very dynamic uh, uh, um, podcast uh, 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 organized by um, uh, uh, Comrade Tacharo Masimba and a Comrade Mato. Uh, you want to tell them just a little bit about uh, uh, about the um, about the podcast, uh, just where they could find it, uh, Tacharo. Yeah, you can go to, uh, like you said, podbean.com. Um, it's called the People's War Radio Show. You can also go to the Black Power 96, I think it's BP96 uh, website to uh, get it. And we have some dynamic interviews. The last one was with Lisa Davis uh, talking, I forget the exact title, but talking about uh, the politics around uh, you know, medicine and healthcare. And it's a dynamic show. Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru. Lastly, uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, there's going to be uh, uh, the APSP regional, Western regional webinar titled, They Say Stimulus, We Say Reparations, Fight the War with Organization. So uh, uh, go on and tune into that. Uh, 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 if you are interested in APSP, uh, tune into that. Uh, let's get organized. Uh, 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 let's mobilize uh, and let's win uh, this people's war. Uh, Uhuru, uh, thanks for this. See you all in two weeks. Uhuru. Uhuru. Vanguard. Uhuru. Israeletu. E Africa. E Africa. Israeletu.